Evening everyone, I am Dr. Ajit Yadav. I am consultant at Department of Intervention Radiology, Sir Gangaram Hospital, Delhi. And today's topic is microwave ablation of thyroid nodule, uh, techniques and results. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you ISVIR and CCMA for giving me this opportunity. So nodular thyroid disease is basically found in the adult population, especially in females and the elderly. The detection rate is 3 to 7 percent by palpation and 20 to 76 percent by the ultrasound. The estimated growth is 5 percent each year. The malignancy rate is usually 5 to 15 percent, which depends on age, gender, radiation exposure and the family background. So the benign nodules, basically they, they don't require any specific treatment. However, Due to the pressure symptoms in the cosmetic regions, we call for a therapy. There are several treatments that are suggested for uh, the benign nodules. Uh, it can be surgery, suppression of thyroid stimulating hormone with the levothyroxine, radioactive iodine, radiofrequency ablation, ethanol ablation, laser ablation, and uh, the newer uh, ablation device is microwave ablation. So what are the clinical problems with the thyroid nodule? First is the malignancy. We have to be sure there is no malignancy within the benign nodule. Second is the cosmetic problem or it can be compressing the trachea, esophagus or other, other the organs in the neck that comes with the pressure symptoms. So surgery is the most uh, standard and the definitive treatment and it's been known to be the most effective and the most common treatment for these thyroid nodules. Compared to the other treatment, thyroid nodule surgery is always higher risk and complication that is 2 to 10 percent and considerably most expensive, not in the Indian scenario, but in the Western countries, surgery is expensive as compared to the other percutaneous treatment. The long hospitalization, scar formation and iatrogenic hypothyroidism is the few of the uh, drawbacks of the surgery. So to summarize, the surgery drawbacks are scar formation, general anesthesia requirement, voice change, hypothyroidism, hypoparathyroidism, pain, and low recovery time. So the, all these things have made us to do the non-surgical treatments. These can be simple aspiration if there is a simple cyst, chemical ablation with ethanol or OK-432, cold is the cryoablation, heat is the laser, Radio frequency ablation, HIFU or microwave ablation. So what are the indications for non-surgical treatment of the thyroid nodules? So it can be symptomatic problem. Symptomatic means if the, there is a patient is having any thyroid uh, the nodules is compressing on the trachea causing the dyspnea or causing the uh, breathlessness or the patient is having heaviness. So there is a symptomatology because of the uh, because of the trachea involvement or because of the compression on the esophagus or there is a tense or a swelling like uh, thing causing the uh, pressure effect in the neck or cosmetic problem patient is having swelling which is visible to the people and the patient wants to get rid of this uh, swelling and he wants the normal neck to be uh, to be the for the young patients especially they want the uh, nodule should not be looking grossly to the people, so that's a cosmetic problem. Hyperfunctioning nodules that can cause the thyrotoxicosis, so because we, in these patients we can do the ablation, but make sure that patient should be euthyroid before going for the ablation. So we have to be taken care of the pre-assessment of the nodule. International thyroid guidelines are basically, uh, the all the data came from the East, from the China and the Korea and Japan. So the most of the, uh, the uh, uh, guidelines are from the uh, eastern of the side of the uh, world, but uh, in the western also we have uh, from the general of ultrasound, we have Italian uh, guidelines which says the uh, indication for ablation, whether it's RFA or microwave, the indications are if the uh, nodule is large, volume is 20 more than 20 ml, non-functioning, benign, in patient presenting with local symptom or cosmetic complaints and when surgery is contraindicated or patient is not willing for the surgery. Autonomously uh, functioning thyroid nodule, 
that is hot or warm on CT scan, either toxic or pre-toxic, or when surgery or radio iodines are contraindicated or denied by the patient. Palliative therapy for recurrent thyroid cancer in the neck when the surgery is contraindicated. For the thyroid malignancy, in the different guidelines, there is no recommendation for thyroid malignancy. However, few of the data says if that uh, the lesion is less than one centimeter and if it is papillary carcinoma of thyroid, we can do the ablation. But there's still, in international literature, no recommendation for thyroid malignancy is there, whether this is ACR or NIH or NHS or it is the Western literature, no recommendation for thyroid malignancy ablation is there. Pre-procedure evaluation. So, before going for the ablation, we have to be sure that uh, we have to prove the, that lesion is benign on histocytological diagnosis for at least two times by FNSC or one time by the biopsy. We should assess the lesion by the ultrasound. We should assess the nodal volume. We should do the symptom score, cosmetic score, laboratory tests like uh, PT-INR and platelet. If there is an extension of the lesion in the retrosternal area or in the neck or if you want to uh, rule out the, any other diagnosis or ectopic thyroid, then we have to go for CT, MRI or technetium 99 scan or iodine thyroid scan. Why FNSCs are required for the uh, lesions in the ablation? So, there is a strong recommendation. So what are the recommendation level and what is the grading of recommendation? So RFA is indicating with the benign nodule that is the moderate evidence is there. Strong recommendation is there. Thyroid nodule should be confined and two FNSCs are required. That definitely evidence is level, it is moderate and grading is strong. Single diagnosis on FNSC or biopsy, but when the features of ultrasound is highly specific for benignity and nodule is showing completely cystic and showing the cometal artifact then definitely we need only one FNSC or biopsy this is the strong recommendation and evidence is very high single diagnosis on FNSC biopsy for the uh, functioning nodule evidence is low and grading is weak FNA, RFA or ablation for AFTN or toxic nodules the evidence level is moderate but grading of recommendation is weak so Definitely, we require at least two FNSCs or one biopsy for this thyroid nodule. Why the biopsy? Some is no, actually we didn't get any uh, of the um, cells or we could not make diagnosis on FNSC or the just the for the needle puncture, then should we should go for biopsy. Yeah, biopsy we can do, that is proven on the Korean consensus guideline that a biopsy can be an alternative to FNS in the evaluation of thyroid nodule in selected patient where the diagnosis cannot be made completely on the FNSC. Biopsy. So what is the safety of biopsy? Yes, safety. The, there is no major complication in the FNSC or biopsy group. So we can do the biopsy with 18 or 20 gauge uh, core biopsy needle in the thyroid also. So just the chances of more of hematoma, there is nothing more than that. So we can do the biopsy of these thyroid nodules safely. Now come to the ablation. So microwave ablation in the thyroid, we are using 16 gauge microwave antenna that is entering into the nodule to the 2 mm incision and we ablate by the microwave radiation. The approach of treatment is safe, relatively low in cost and less time consuming. It's a newer technology than the RFA and heat sink is less as well as time of procedure is also less. So things needed before and for microwave ablation. First of all, definitely we need a patient. Secondly, we need a doctor to do the ablation. A microwave antenna. We can check there are so many uh, companies available in the market. We are using from Eco microwave generator. We need cooling tubes that are attached to the piping into the antenna. We need a helping hand and an ultrasound machine to guide us into the nodule. So position of the patient and physician during the procedure, we should sit on the head side of the patient at the level of the head. Our head should, our hand should reach the neck of the patient. The patient can be hyper extended or neck can be straight. The electrode coming directly from the machine into your right or left hand, depending on the side of thyroid nodule. We have a foot switch that should be on right or left leg, depending on the comfort of the 
physician and we have to uh, press the foot pedal then the micro machine is on and we can do the ablation and we have to do it uh, we have to pull the uh, antenna slowly and every time we have to uh, switch uh, the foot pedal for the 10 seconds technique first we have to do the hydro dissection hydro dissection is just to prevent the heat injury to the adjacent organ valves or vessel that is taken care by the hydro dissection so which kind of uh, the structures are there the first the major thing is the danger triangle that contains the recurrent laryngeal nerve and the part of the esophagus so we have to be taken care especially this area to so make a uh, hydro dissection in this area secondly the uh, the middle cervi cervical sympathetic ganglia or posterior type of vagus nerve that again another is a medial type of vagus nerve on the lateral part of the thigh and the c1 is the the basic thing is the hair if there is recurrent laryngeal have some variation it can be the just posterior to the deep lobe of the thyroid so we have to be sure there is a hydro dissection uh, between the thyroid nodule and between these nerves and we have to take taken care of the carotid vessels and the jugular vein so how to make the uh, hydro dissection so before making the diagnosis uh, we should be sure Okay, so before making the diagnosis, can you can you see me, Dana? I think there is some network glitch. Yeah, I can see you. I can see you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, how to make the hydro dissection and where to make the hydro dissection particularly? So, if the lesion is deep and on the posterior side, touching the uh, vessels on the laterally and recurrent laryngeal nerve on the medially. we should make a hydro dissection that should reach laterally on the posterior side and mid uh, avoiding the recurrent laryngeal nerve and esophagus so the hydro dissection should be complete on all the three sides if lesion is the posterior side reaching up to the anterior our hydro dissection should starting from the uh, deep to the uh, wall and it should cover the carotid vessels and it should go posteriorly and the recurrent laryngeal nerve and the trachea if the lesion is anterior in the superficial lobe or in the isthmus then we should make a hydro dissection the trachea and the isthmus if the lesion is superficial just uh, on the in the superficial lobe and on lateral side of the thyroid the hydro dissection is just between the thyroid and the uh, wall the the skin if it is the lesion is just on the posterior and on the medial side so it touching the recurrent laryngeal nerve definitely we have to be sure that the hydro dissection should be between the recurrent laryngeal nerve and the lesion and we should start the lesion uh, the ablation after seeing the thing that there is at least 3 mm of layer of the uh, fluid between the, these two things if it is on the lateral side on the posterior we can make a small layer of the hydro dissection between the vessels and the lesion if it is done posteriorly sometimes we actually don't need hydro dissection but we can push some amount of fluid just between the vessels and the lesion if it is the lateral most part and the posterior side then definitely we need the hydro dissection between the vessels and the vagus nerve and the lesion so i will show you the video how to make a hydro dissection we you are we are using the normal saline for hydro dissection using the 22 gauge spinal needle you can see this is my needle that is going inside so what is the basically what are we using here we are using the 22 gauge spinal needle that is reaching just in the periphery of the lesion sometimes we have to enter into the capsule of the thyroid and then come back and we injecting the normal saline so in microwave we can use the normal saline whether in rfa we are using the dextrose so whenever we use we are injecting you can see it's just increasing the depth of the lesion and there the saline is going slowly into the into just outside the capsule of the thyroid sometimes it can go inside the capsule of the thyroid but we have to be make sure that the saline goes all around the lesion reaching up to the recurrent laryngeal nerve and the trachea
So come to the technique of ablation. So there are two techniques. One is the medial and transisthmic approach, and second one is the lateral approach. So how to decide the approach to microwave ablation? The same. The first we have to make hydro dissection. Then, if it is the deep and posterior, we can take either of the approaches. Can be transisthmic. It be lateral. If it is large, reaching up to the uh, anterior part, we can take both approach. If it is the uh, posterior part to current laryngeal, still you can take the both approach. Systemic is the better one if there is a uh, hydro dissection is maintained well. If the lesion is on the posterior side, lateral ball, just take a transisthmic approach that will be suitable because the longer length of this normal thyroid, the greater the stability of the antenna. If the lesion is superficial one, you can go from either medial or lateral side, and you can take the both approach. If it is the lateral ball on the superficial, always go by the transisthmic approach. If it is the posterior and deep, you should take transisthmic approach. If it is the lateral one towards the carotid vessel in the posterior, you can take both approach. But that is normal right parenchyma, and the transisthmic approach is better one. so when we we introduce our micro antenna into the lesion we should reach up to the other part of the lesion start ablation at 30 or 40 watt for 10 second at each circle and then pull the needle you have to ablation do by the foot pedal make a circle of ablation just pull it pull it pull it and cover the full circle full circle of the full circle of the of the tumor from uh, from the anterior to posterior or from the cranial to caudal or vice versa you can do so it's from the entry you have to go inside and make a circle of ablation and cover whole of the uh, whole of the nodule from cranial to caudal or caudal to cranial from anterior to posterior posterior to anterior so it will be easy if you start from the one of the direction so you can see because after there is a bubble it's difficult to see which area is already ablated and which area is not so either you have to start from the cranial side or from the caudal side ablation of the solid cystic or cystic nodule so in the cystic it is very easy to the ablation after hydro dissection we should place a micro antenna in the center of the cavity make sure the tip should reach at the other end of the cyst or just at the end of the lesion so this is the my antenna i am pushing an antenna in the center of the lesion and in just touching the other end of the cyst so after the placement of antenna you have to place a parallel needle to the antenna and aspirate out all the fluid first so we have to place in uh, 20 or 22 gauge needle or 18 gauge of the spinal needle parallel to the antenna and aspirate the fluid and completely so that there should be no fluid left in the uh, cavity sometimes when we are using micro uh, rfa we can place the Uh, sodium chloride nacl solution or normal saline solution just to increase the heat but in micro we don't have such theory so we just have to decrease or we have to aspirate the, all the fluid so that the there is in a well position of wall on the micro antenna so after uh, aspirating out all the fluid we should start using the ablation using 30 watt and by moving short technique 10 second at a one point and it portion outside the cavity also if there is a solid portion outside the cavity we should ablate that portion also and wall of the if wall is more than 3 mm we should again take a puncture of the wall of the cyst ablate it completely so that we can see the bubbles in the whole of the wall of the cyst well as the solid portion of the cyst transisthmic approach if the lesion is more than 5 cm and if it is touching the recurrent laryngeal nerve so there are the two theories one is to make great hydro dissection or another is if there is less hydro dissection still we are to be sure we should ablate the lateral part of the lesion we should ablate the triangle left some part of the thyroid to nodule towards the recurrent laryngeal nerve after one month when the, the lesion is shrink in size we should we should again take a puncture and ablate that part of the lesion and we can be like we can have that shrinkage of the lesion so at least we need a two session of the ablation in these patients 
so whenever the lesion is less than 5 cm intraparenchymal we can do the ablation in just one session if it is more than 5 cm or is multiple produce we have to go for the multiple sessions of the ablation so this is the one of the patient we did the two uh, session from the transsystemic approach so how to do the follow up so follow up is the uh, is a day care procedure so we should telephonically uh, follow up the patient on the next day for the delayed complication visit, visit by the thyroid function test and ultrasound neck three month visit by the thyroid function test ultrasound neck and look for relief in the symptoms for six month and every six monthly follow up we should follow up the patient imaging follow up and effect so before the procedure we should calculate the volume and the size of the lesion like in this patient the lesion was uh, cystic one with four centimeter in size after three month follow up this is the zoom image we can see this lesion is shrink to seven or eight mm only we should look for the cosmetic effect like in this patient this is before microablation just immediate session one you can see the the uh, site of the puncture before session two and this is the six month follow-up you can see the neck is coming to normal there is no swelling seen on the neck so in the complications uh, come to the complication uh, in the recent multi-center study the complication rate after ablation was less than four percent with a major complication rate of less than 1.5 percent so pain is the most common uh, complaint uh, for, for the patient during the ablation all the patient pain was decreased rapidly when the generator output is reduced or turned off voice change is a serious complication whenever there is heat is given to the recurrent laryngeal nerve there is likely there is a voice change or there is a hemorrhage so if this patient is having voice change we should start the steroid and we should give the nerve stimulator uh, nerve protector like vitamin b12 hematoma is one of the complication hematoma can be controlled by compressing the neck for the several minutes and we usually see that the the bluishness on the neck or there's a hematoma usually resolved by the third day coming to the result so in the last two decades uh, before 2010 the most of the ablation was done uh, by the rfa by the korean groups and by the italian group and uh, after 2010 microwave came into the market and then the studies were came for the microwave so in 2007 the first study from the two rfa they uh, evaluate 302 benign nodules in 236 patient the study was from the korea the volume of index of nodule was 0 0.11 to 95 so mean volume was 6.1 the volume index of decreased to 0.1.1 ml and volume reduction rate was 12 5 to 100 percent in 27 of patient the nodule disappeared and more than 50% reduction seen in 91% of the patient so this was seen result was seen by the rfa there are the studies which shows ethanol versus rfa in cystic lesion so we found that there is no basic difference between the ethanol ablation versus radio frequency ablation in purely cystic lesion of the thyroid but still we have nowadays because previously the radio frequency ablation microevaluation was not, not routinely available for the patient so ethanol was used in the pure cystic lesion ethanol is still uh, we can use for the cystic lesion but whenever we have a lesion which is solid cystic or the complex lesion we should use the ablation along with uh, ethanol or ablation alone so if what are the need of another session means if there is a lesion we should go for a single session or multiple session so there is a study effect of additional session for the uh, these nodules so that was published in 2012 in the radiology uh, journal so they found that six month follow up there is was significant nodule uh, nodule reduction from 30 13.3 to 3.8 and another group is 13 to 6.8 uh, to 3 ml so each group shows there is a significant improvement in cosmetic and symptom score but as no significant difference in volume reduction cosmetic score and symptom score so basically if lesion is more than 20 ml and there is unresolved clinical problems then we sh should go for another session of radio frequency ablation or ablation microablation so basically the 
larger region uh, larger uh, lesions requires the two session of the ablation for if lesion is less than 20 ml we can do the ablation in the single setting another study with this surgery versus rfa so in this study the radio frequency ablation patient the nodule decrease significantly from 5.4 ml to 0.4 ml at the one month one year follow up the incidence of complications were significantly higher in surgery than from rfa that is 6% versus 1% hypothyroidism was seen in almost 71% of the patient after surgery but none of the patient in after the radio frequency ablation the rate of residual nodule and hospital stay was significantly greater after surgery but the cause difference was so after 2010 the microwave came and the results were from the microwave we have seen that the uh, one of the major article published in european journal of radiology the study from the china which showed that the thyroid nodule the decrease in size after microablation 6 month follow up in 254 of 477 nodules the main decrease in size was from 2.1 to 0.4 ml with mean percentage decrease is 0.65 volume reduction ratio more than 50% was observed in 82% of the patient and 30% of the patient shows the complete disappearance of the lesion and they showed that the treatment was well tolerated no major complication was observed except the pain and transient voice change so this was the meta analysis that was published in 2016 which shows that the total number of 522 nodules in 263 patients there is the reduction in volume of thyroid nodule from 45% to 65% and they said that no study reported a significant definitive change in the laboratory parameter except of the one of the study another meta analysis published in 2020 there is also from the china we studied that 33 original article taken in this study seven studies met into the inclusion criteria these five were retrospective studies and two were prospective trials so one of was controlled and one was multi center the results showed significant improvement in nodule volume clinical symptom score cosmetic score from the baseline and follow up visits in all other studies most common adverse effect were hematoma pain transient or permanent voice change that is less than 5% so they also conclude that microablation is if and safe for the treatment of benign thyroid nodule so what is the effect of ablation on the thyroid function there is not so much studies but one of the group they publish that the compare the thyroid function before and after ablation on the 24 hour after the 24 hour ablation there is increased t3 free t3 and free t4 volume and decrease in the tsh level however after 6 month thyroid antibodies and tg levels were decrease actually not increase so significantly there is no major difference in the thyroid function test are noted after the ablation there is no major uh, articles on rfa versus microablation but i found one article that is radio frequency ablation versus microablation in the scientific reports that is prospective multi center study the rfa and microwave group are having number same number of patient approximately same number of patients the parameters also same and the follow up months also nearly 13.5 to 13.9 and the comparison of this symptomatic score between the two groups were approximately same there was no statistical significance between the two group two groups so we can do either ablation or microablation definitely there are the only the technology change in the last decades we are uh, we are shifting from the rfa to microwave in the every organ so the microwave now is the choice of uh, for the patient as well as the physician but statistically uh, statistically there is no significance of the so to conclude microwave ablation is effective alternative to surgery for treating the benign lesion non functioning or aftn nodules proper planning and ablation is necessary for the complete ablation and to decide the number of session 
its efficiency can be maximized by complete ablation of entire nodule margin which is essential in order to prevent the marginal regrowth and to effectively reduce the size of the thyroid nodule thank you and this is my team at my hospital thank you very much